It, it undermines artisanship. I mean, if this happens, the entire luxury watch industry is basically at risk of being a lie. What is up, watch fam? I am Anna, and this is Christian, and we are from Theo and Harris, home of the best vintage watches and watch straps on the market. So today's watch question of the day is, what is the future of 3D printing in watches? We're talking about what 3D printing is, the potential dangers of 3D printing in watches, okay. and then maybe a silver lining. Awesome, let's do it. Let's do it. What are you wearing today, Anna? I'm wearing a Casio alarm chrono because it's raining. I am wearing something the exact opposite <laughs> because that is sacrilege. I'm wearing a vintage Rolex bubble bag. Definitely something a little bit more traditionally Theo and Harris. Um, but of course, on a rainy day like today, I think you might be uh, in the right direction. Yeah. This, not that, is available in the Theo and Harris watch shop. So go on and check it out. So how do we answer this question? I suppose that you should lay the groundwork here. What is 3D printing? Um, is it being used in watches? And really, what is what is the worst case scenario? Yeah. So what is 3D printing? Just like a normal printer takes a template or an image from a computer mm -hmm. and puts that ink on paper, a 3D printer will take a image or a design mm -hmm. that was created on a computer and make that physical object out of whatever material you put in it. So it could be steel, yellow gold, rose gold, it could be anything. Exactly. It's no longer a different person attempting to recreate something. Mm -hmm. It's actually a computer that has it down to a scan, like just down to a science, Yeah. recreating whatever they're trying to create to a T. Mm -hmm. That's very scary. Exactly, and and just to demonstrate that the scale, there's a designer who's gonna produce a 50 home village in Latin America this summer, and With each, a 3D printer. Each home is gonna be done in 24 hours. So that, using concrete, all concrete. So that's, that's the massive scale. And back several years ago in 2014, a woman made sculptures that were incredibly detailed, incredibly defined, that could fit within the head of a needle. And the so 3D printer made those. Oh, Jesus. So, yeah, she 3D printed them. So that, that's the scale we're working with here. Right. Okay, we can do really big things, we can do really small things, but what about complex things, right? Mm -hmm. Like smart objects. They've been used in producing prosthetic and bionic limbs, nuclear reactor parts, the first 3D printed sports car. And in 2016, Christophe Lemaire, as, as most people have heard, made a turbulion using plastic, but he 3D printed a turbulion movement. So we do know that these things are possible. So it sounds like watches maybe are, uh, it's already gone beyond watches. Watches right. seem to be not like the next frontier. If 3D printing technology can become intelligent enough to do watches, no, 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 they seem to be beyond that. Yeah, exactly. So, so now it becomes a question of, well, well, what does it mean when it actually infiltrates the watch mm -hmm. industry? Exactly. So, for instance, let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. um, one of, you know, the, the, the more famous watch companies in the world for, for hand finishing, uh, Lang & Zona, mm -hmm. a, a German company based in Glashütte, um, is famous, I mean, world-renowned and praised um, for their hand finishing, particularly on a balance cock. Mm -hmm. uh, it's fairly well known that each balance cock is hand engraved by one of the engravers in Glashütte, uh, and each engraving is unique, almost a signature of that person. Mm -hmm. So what I think you're telling me is if you put that individual piece into a 3D printer, they can replicate it completely. Oh yeah. So you would have no idea if it was an original part or an unoriginal part. Exactly. However, the part where 3D printing has its limitations is in assembly. As, as many people know, hot horology brands, these movements have hundreds and hundreds of, right. of parts that require hand placement. I, and, and, I, and I get that, but, but, but you know, what you're telling me, again, I, I'm grappling with this. What you're telling me is, okay, fine. So the 3D printer, at least not yet, can actually assemble the thing. I can't, can't do it. It cannot right? assemble, so, right. So if I, put a, if I put an AP Royal Oak 15202 into a 3D scan, the scanner for the 3D printer, mm -hmm. it could not reassemble it. It would just do the external. The majority of the value historically and until today um, on that watch is how intricately that, that that case and bracelet is finished, mm -hmm. and it is done, you know, by people um, that 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 com computers didn't exist, but couldn't do it then. Audemars Piguet could utilize three D printing technology to make their Royal Oak cases, mm -hmm. which of course would never happen, dropping their prices dramatically because right. of the labor. 
I'm gonna go jump out of a window now. <laughs> the industries that are currently using 3D printing use it because it's cheaper, mm. faster, and it increases your ability to innovate, but keeping the same speed. Which makes right? perfect sense when you're talking about, you know, like when you're producing these, these, these non-luxury products, not yes. artisan products. Mm -hmm. When you're talking about products that their entire value basically is, is made up, uh, their entire value is, is backed by artisanship, exactly. by manual labor, by people that have spent their entire lives learning a craft, this becomes quite bizarre. Yeah, that's exactly it. Right? And that's why minimal research we've done, I don't believe that, you know, a brand like Eilong and Zone would invest in 3D printing because they rely so heavily on the, the, you know, sort of this pride that a person who has a unique sort of stamp on this watch has touched it and and, and, and made it for you. But yeah. that doesn't mean that someone who has a 3D printer who can get their hands on right. that Could watch. theoretically make parts and flood the market with those parts. Exactly, and especially yeah. dials. Think about hand-painted dials. I mean, right. you can mass produce those like crazy with 3D printers. That's really All that said, you know, there are parts that aren't scary that actually could be a benefit. Like those manufacturers who are making more basic mechanical movements. Whose value is not derived or, or built upon this idea of artisanship, it, just dysfunction. Yes. In fact, their value, I would say, is based right. on the fact that they are so serviceable, they're so yeah. they're so simple, they're so reliable because of, of how basic they are. Yeah. And mass producing those in a cheaper way, in a faster way, you know, and, and still allowing for quality control at the end of that. Right. You know, that that could be a very useful way to implement That's 3D printing technology. Really interesting. Anna, thank you so much for bringing all this information. Thank you guys all for watching. Uh, more important than any of this, I'd really love to hear your thoughts. I'm sure that you guys are looking at this from many different angles that mm -hmm. I am not. And maybe Also, if anyone knows a lot more. If any of you guys sure are authorities out there, that'd be great. Uh, please comment down below with your insights. I'm looking forward to reading and replying. Yeah. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe to the Theo and Harris channel if you love watches. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And we will see you all very soon. What is up, watch fam? What are we called? I don't know. Let's start over. <laughs> you ready? We're gonna start again. I got this. Ah, go. Okay. Go ready? Let's go. Look at you. I can... <laughs>